What's your response? To that? You're shaking your head, Matt. What do you What do you make of that? Well, let's ask everybody yeah. up here. I mean, yeah. what she what Reamer is saying. Let me just throw it out. She is saying that Trump won a whole lot of votes based on bigotry, trying to turn one group of people against the other. What do you guys think? No. Okay, no. well, just tell us. He, he, he stirred a dialogue. There's not one real person in this room, Democrat or Republican or Independent, that would allow anything to happen like that, even our Congress, that would not be acceptable to anybody. And he just started the dialogue, and the dialogue has changed, and it's gotten better. None of that's ever going to happen. I was no, not he's even... Proposed, he's proposing legislation, though. He's proposing, he's proposing you a, can a national registry. He's proposing removing DAPA and DACA. These are In the first proposals. place, you can't promote that. That's anti-religion. It's against our Constitution. I agree. That's never going to pass. And even if it went to the Supreme Court, I don't care, it would be thrown out. He can propose all he wants. It's got to go through our Congress first. That's another buffer zone we have. Do, do, do other people, this was something that I encountered a lot when I talked to Trump voters, uh, who, who, would, who would say very similar things. They would basically say, the things that he says that are the worst things, like the Muslim ban, for instance, that like, that's just him talking smack, basically, and it's not going to happen. Does that, I'm curious what you three think of that. Like, is that how you thought of it, or do you think, like, I hope he does that, or? No, I well, hope he does not do that. Oh, I mean, I would never want to you see can't. anybody thrown out just because of their beliefs or their, I mean, that's awful. No. Gail? <laughs> yeah. You know, to some extent, I'm hoping it is, being one that works in a factory. And I have tried to finish my college degree to be in this factory to do the job I'm doing. But because there's so many illegals in there, I can't get the pay I should get. So, so you think you think illegal, undocumented immigrants are, are are threatening your pay, and you hope he does get he does deport a lot. Of them. Well, not including the fact it's even been said on radio that a lot of them that get stopped don't pay their tickets. They go to Mexico and hide. They get away with it. They don't pay their taxes. They go to Mexico and hide, and then come back. I've seen this. It's upsetting. Senator, you want to respond? To that? Well, yeah. did you want to? Did you, Richard, did you uh, I yeah. think that uh, a lot of what he says is just unimplementable rhetoric, just to gain, gain attention, and uh, it would never be congressionally approved. Well, uh, as somebody who was in the Congress, uh, let me not, uh, I'm not quite so sure that, that uh, you're right. Mm. Um, uh, but I think that. Um, there's no question to my mind, and I find it interesting that what three out of four of you are saying is, yeah, he talked about that stuff, but it'll never happen. We don't believe that it will ever happen. Uh, why do you vote for somebody who, in a sense, then is lying? He started a dialogue with the American people. And he used the media to get his point across and changes, but he wasn't lying. He started the dialogue. He voiced his opinion and he, he got feedback and he addressed it as he went along. He knows as well as anybody in this room, you can't go after a, a group of people because, because of religious religion. beliefs. It's never, and I knew that right off the bat. Well, but he was still up front and he talked to the public. Well, it's an interesting point. I mean, what you're saying is that you think, and I think, that what he was talking about was unconstitutional. Yeah, you got a candidate for president of the United States talking about grossly unconstitutional things and well, wins an election. Well, look what our Congress does. They pass unconstitutional laws every day. Can okay. I ask one thing? Yeah, please. You know, I'm sitting ask two here. things. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I might make it three. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all this. And, you know, as she says, Who's paying for this, right? Who's paying for the Medicaid? Who's paying for the Social Security? Who's paying for the Medicare? Who? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are. Now, have any of you seen down on streets that it seems as though we have become the silent minority and not the majority? What do you mean by that? How much have we been listened to, really? But who's the, who's the we when you say this? You mean us people? Who people? The people, people who need the Medicare, the people who need the Social Security, who needs the help with the education. Okay, but now here's good good point. Let's let's see if we can go forward on this. 
I am assuming that you believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that we should not cut Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid. Is that correct or not? Yeah. Okay. I believe it shouldn't be cut. Okay. Do you know who is now working very hard to try to do that? Republicans in Congress oh, yeah. have a plan oh, under the guise of saving Medicare and saving Social Security, making devastating cuts. That's what Republicans are now trying to do. The other point that you made, which is a very, I think you made it, or you, both of you have made it actually, is who's going to pay for this stuff? And that is a very fair point. What all of us should know is that over the last 25 years, there has been a massive transfer of wealth in this country from you to the top one-tenth of one percent. In other words, the middle class has shrunk and trillions of dollars have gone to the top one-tenth of one percent. Do you think it's inappropriate to ask those people to stop paying their fair share of taxes so we can adequately fund Medicaid and making public colleges and universities tuition free? Is that an unfair thing to ask? I don't think it's an unfair thing to ask. They, the one percenters, they got rich off us. That's right. So it's time they put back. Okay. All right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with much more from the crowd. Don't go anywhere. There is some rhetoric uh, coming from Mr. Trump, uh, which, needless to say, disturbs me very, very much. Uh, his campaign, which was based on bigotry.